Don't let your kids watch it! Welcome everyone to the Undercover Brony Reviews. The episode reviewed today will be Secret of My Excess, written by M.A. Larson. Listen, do you want to know a secret? Do you promise not to tell? Closer, let me whisper in your ear. Your mom. That was a Beatles song. You know, this episode's interesting to me because there's a lot of episodes that, um, that through, I feel like I've had a few episodes that we've talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Where I'm just like, where I'm just like, you know, this episode means something to me. Or maybe I haven't said that exactly. But, you know, season one and two both have landmark episodes where I'm just like, you know, oh, this is the reason I stayed. This is the reason I watched. I wouldn't say this is one of them, but I wouldn't say it's not one of them. But the reason why I, the reason why I open with that is because um, the last, like, three episodes, well, I guess if you don't count Mary well, this is this was just like, like, I'm just trying to imagine when you were watching the show – like for you, this must have just been boom, 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 you know, hit after hit. Cause you know, we had the, um, uh, you know, you know, the last three episodes were real uh, crucial to you. And I know this one, I know you like this one because this is secret of my excess. This is, um, this episode is bus, 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 parody ground zero. Like they started in season one, but you're like, that can never be a thing. You're like that one meme where that girl's going, but then this episode happens. Then that's when you're like, that's when you're like, mm. that's that's where a whole bunch of people are like, mm, sparity looking kind of thick, though. And here's what's funny. When I first saw this episode, it was immediately after watching um, Sweet and Elite. And so I didn't know who Spike was at this point. So what an introduction. <laughs> um, With arguably his best episode. And it's funny because I actually didn't like his characterization when I first saw it because I'm like, this character's kind of an asshole. Like, what the hell? Um, but then you get to the ending, which, you know, we'll definitely get to it. But when he's almost saying, I almost kind of had a crush on you and, you know, uh, Rarity puts her hoof in and stops him from saying anything more and starts crying. I thought I had just like stumbled upon like this huge revelation of something. And then I go back to the series and I'm like, no, that's just kind of a nod to the ship. That's just about it. But we'll get to that when we get to that. So this episode, this episode also was not just Sparity Grand Zero. Grand Zero. Yeah, this was not Sparity Grand Central Station in Station Square. You see, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this episode and about Rarity. Okay, people have people. I feel like everyone kind of stopped doing this after season. I'd say three, but probably more after season four. I feel like for a long, long time, in a galaxy far, far away, in a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Once upon a time, everyone used to debate like all the time. Um, you know, I mean, everyone likes to, you know, wax pseudo philosophical about, you know, the main six and their true intentions, their real personality. What's their Freudian excuses? What are their fears? Uh, are they really this? Are they really that? Are they good or bad? In a lot of ways, Rarity got that more than any of them. Because with Twilight, it was kind of weird because she wasn't a blank slate, but there was like three different jumping points you could go off, you know, for being you know, book nerd, uh, magic, magic, magic horse, and, you know, um, science horse, you know, and, and Rainbow Dash had one too but that's just because her fandom's so big rarity was the was the one out of all of them where people where people were really questioning or trying to put forward whether or not these alternative these alternate qualities about her were bad ones specifically you know does she manipulate Spike? Is she actually that nice? Does she deserve her element? Rainbow Dash got that. Rainbow Dash got the does she deserve her element one probably more than anybody else. But Rarity got that too. And this episode's pretty well liked. This is one of those episodes where 
it almost falls in the category of people that like this sort of thing will find that this is the sort of thing that they like. I think it's better than that. I think it's genuinely good. But this is also one of the episodes, if not the episode, that everyone used or uses as like the jumping off point to write alternative interpretations of rarity and whether or not she's a good person or just using spike me on the other hand i'm watching this episode and i'm like ha ah, cool big dragon that's metal freaking is metal is freak dude <laughs> um so it starts off with twilight basically closing all her curtains and she's like no distractions because today is too important reshelving day Takes out all the books, they all fall to the floor. And then we get that beautiful, beautiful reference of the Sorcerer's Apprentice with the music and the fact that everything's like circling around her. And I was going to say, I didn't see, uh, I was going to say, I didn't see Twilight or Spike commit mass murder on a bunch of brooms. Right. Um, I think Mickey only killed the one broom. One of her lines is she has one where it's like um like this this such and such book um that goes in pony history and then she has modern spell casting that's classics huh i think we just call that reference <laughs> yeah exactly so spike's all stoked because he has this he has this dope aff fire ruby that he's been saving to eat because remember uh gems to dragons are basically drug i mean candy so he's like i've been saving this one all year man he's been saving that one all year <laughs> i'm and... to shoot up <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna um, i'm gonna dust up silicon spike is stoked because he's gonna eat the fire emblem and so rarity then rarity then pops up and then she sees the gem. Now, this isn't like a prized possession, and this isn't even really, it's sort of a gift to himself, but like this is something that Spike had been sitting on and saving up for, or saving for, for a long time. I, don't, I forget exactly if he ever said how long, but she sees the ruby, and she basically says, mm, I want that you go and let me have that sort of she asks really nicely and he's like oh well i really wanted it but oh okay because she's like oh what are you gonna do with that that's awesome he's like i'm gonna eat it she's like Ugh. so he gives her the gem she gives him a kiss on the cheek tv trope says a peck on the cheek but it's a kiss come oh, yeah. on it's 2020 here's what's interesting is the fact that you have this line from Rarity, and she's like, did you say delicious? Now, let's just say this. This is an M.A. Larson episode. Knowing him... I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this saying no more. I agree with you. I think I think Spike was actually saying that about Rarity's ass. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, knowing M.A. <laughs> Larson, he's probably thinking that. But anyway, <laughs> the, the thing is, knowing that M.A. Larson is like, the king of continuity when it came to this show. I'm shocked that he put that line in because I'm pretty sure that she already knew that Spike would eat gems. Did they talk about that in Dog and Pony show? Because listen, here's the thing about cartoons. Here's the thing about cartoons and just television shows and movies in general. 90% of the time, if a character has a character trait, and another character isn't there to see them exhibit that character trait, nine times out of ten in the show, they don't know. Now, of oh. course, now of course, now of course you would assume, oh, when they come up in conversation, they're friends. Yes, in real life, but not in cartoons, movies, and or television shows, unless that person has a pass with them. At the end of Dog and Pony Show. <laughs> He's munching on a gem, and it's basically we're like after the you know the the moral is being taught out you know drilled out. You have 
Spike being like, "Yeah, you'll have plenty of uh, you have plenty of gems for for the gems for the sapphire shore dresses." And Rarity says, "Not if you eat them all," and grabs the half eaten gem out of his uh, out of his hand with her magic. So yes, she did already know. Plus one modifier denied. Emma Larson, <laughs> you are not a beautiful, beautiful man in this episode. I'm sorry. We're calling you out eight years after the fact. We're making a call out post on Twitter.com. So here's an interesting thing. I was thumbing through TV Tropes trying to see if maybe they caught it. I don't think TV Tropes caught it, but I did notice something. This episode originally had uh, this episode originally had two alternative titles. Really? Giving Dangerously, which I guess maybe they didn't use because it was too edgy. But then there's just the very on the nose Attack of the Fifty Foot Dragon. Instead, they went with instead they went with the reference to a not obscure but not really famous but still a good Michael J. Fox movie. Well, I'm thinking Giving Dangerously. That sounds awesome. Like that would have been an awesome title. It plays into the episode in the and and stuff too. I mean, I guess you could say that it didn't really. No, wait, yeah, it does play into the themes. It plays into the theme. It's more than secret of my excess. Actually, excess isn't even a excess. Isn't even like a plot point in the episode. No, more like a, more like excess of D's nuts. Ha! Gotti, Gotti. They just went for the reference. Damn it. Afterwards, it's time for Spike's actual birthday. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't his birthday when he was going to eat the gym. He was just showing Twilight. Then Rarity walked in. <sighs> Twilight um, uses... Um, because I think Rarity like left some lipstick on Spike's face. And he's, yes. he, he didn't wash it off. So... Twilight finally washes it off. And then, um, so it's Spike's first birthday in Ponyville. And I forget how the subject comes up. I just know he talks about how normally he only ever gets one gift and it's from Twilight and it's always a book. And I always, I always remember thinking that line was funny. Well, what I love is, you know, you were talking about how um, the, the, the cheek hadn't been washed. And I'm thinking that was a great subversion because usually – You'll hear them say, I'm never watching this cheek again. And by the next time, the animations reset so that, you know, that cheek is perfectly fine. But yet they actually went in and did that trope. And it was glorious. But I also love how when Spike's like, I usually don't get all these presents. Like, it's something along the lines of, like, I think Rainbow Dash asks, don't you get? Don't you know you get presents on your birthday? It's like, yeah, but I only get one present each year from Twilight, a book, and then it switches over to Twilight bringing down a book, and just like hearing that, it just slowly backs up the stairs. So Spike goes over to Sugar Cube Corner to get some cupcake that the cakes made for him. Mm-hmm. He's going back, and then he runs into Cheerily, mm-hmm. which, um, man, she got shafted. I thought for sure they would expand on her character at some point, but now nah, dude, she dipped off the face of the earth after pretty much season three. Yep, pretty um, much. My God, you're right. Like, like even if it, we don't go with the like, even if we don't go with the whole you know Big Mac Cheerily thing. Like, that was just mostly a meme. Like, they never really... I well, I mean, yeah, there was that one episode that we're get, that's coming up. But that never really got too much credence outside that episode. But I thought for sure maybe we could get, like, an episode of just her chilling. But nope. The last episode that we saw her in... And it kind of, like, pisses me off a bit. And if, if you tell me it's before season, I'm going to be generous. If you tell me it's before season seven. The cart before the ponies. <laughs> Amazon was so bad, it killed Cheerly. <laughs> yes. It brought her back one final time to have it be her swan song. And then they're just like, okay, 
fuck that episode. Goodbye, Julie. Tap of the finger. That makes me want to die. So he crashes. So Spike runs into Cheerilee, literally, <laughs> and he mentions it's his birthday. She's like, "Oh, sick! Here's a hat, dog." Yeah. And then he, oh, this is why it's called Secret of My Excess. Okay, so it kind of works, but I think giving dangerously fits a little better. But whatever. Yeah. So he goes around town. He senses an opportunity. He goes around town, everybody. And he's like, Chio, bro, it's my birthday. And TV Trope says he's extorting presents from them. I don't think that's extorting. I think that's I think that's like low-key guilt tripping. Yeah. Which maybe that's that counts as extorting. Well, one thing I do want to mention is back when he was at Sugar Cube Corner, um, I love the little animation they gave him where he's like going between his toes like his tiptoes and he's in the heel of his toe or the heel of his foot kind of like rocking back and forth because i'm like that is every little kid ever when they're excited about something just saying but i love how there's two characters here that we never hear from again one of them is named lickety split and he literally has a banana split cutie mark and he and Spike gets the ball from him, and then you have a character named June Bug, which is basically a recolor of, I think Daisy, you know, from the the Flower Girls, um, and I'm just like, wow, that that's that's interesting. He's like, hey, give me those flowers, bitch. Um, then Twilight comes in, grabs his like green i i don't even know if it's an ear but she grabs him by the ear basically and it's like sorry june bug i don't know what's gotten into him and spike pretends that he's oh that he got you know the whole thing knocked out of him and uh as soon as twilight turns her back all right who else has a present for spikey wakey Let's do it. And I love the animation they do where his tongue comes out and it's like almost serpentine in a way. Um, and then his his eyelids blink sideways. And I'm like, yes, because that's really playing into his reptilian sort of nature. So the next morning, Twilight is shocked to find Spike's bed covered with gifts. And now, Spike's not a little baby dragon anymore. He's not Chad like at the like at the end, but he he's a big boy now. I'm a big kid now. So she takes him to a vet, another place, and then to Cora. Yeah, she and- takes him to a doctor, the same doctor that diagnosed Zakora with swamp fever, no less. And, you know, he's trying to figure out, like, oh, I know what the problem is. He's a dragon. It's like, that's not the problem. He's always been a dragon. Oh, I don't know about baby dragons. I know about baby ponies. Maybe you should try that. And they go in and they meet the veterinarian. And I love the line that she gets is, hm. well, I'm flummoxed. You bring me a dog, I've got it diagnosed in seconds. A snake even faster. But to be honest, I've never seen a real live dragon before. That's just such a great line. So then Zakora um, takes him to Zakora, and basically, because remember, this show establishes that griffins and dragons are pieces of shit, mm-hmm. and that his dragon nature is compelling him to. She says hoard, but. Hoarding isn't making people give you a bunch of stuff. Hoarding is get is keeping a bunch of stuff and never freaking getting rid of it, which is different from collecting, but whatever. Oh, I'm just thinking now on this episode of Hoarders, Spike the Dragon. <laughs> but there's a lot of animation things that I love in this episode specifically. And there's one where 
you have Zakora like doing her little checks and stuff, grabs Spike's head and like knocks on the top of it. And then you have her grabbing Spike's claw in her mouth and, you know, flicking it. And it does that whole thing where the, the, um, it moves up, like the flicking motion goes to the other arm and smacks Twilight on the head. So yeah, Dragon Nature is making him hoard, which is causing him to also get bigger. And and TV Trope says, drives him to even more avarice, which is a nice way of saying he just becomes a bit of a dick. Mm -hmm. So he's reverted to just, you know, doing your generic Hulk speak type of stuff. Mm -hmm. He's grabbing a bunch of stuff. and Including Scooter Scooter. Yeah, they try to, like, trap him in Twilight's library, but, of course, that doesn't work because he's a freaking dragon. And now I'm thinking of that one scene from Ponies the Anthology 2, I want to say, where um, where it has that Altered Beast um, reference, um, where he's like, Spike, what? And as he's growing bigger, it has the Altered Beast logo, where, like, yeah. him transforming into bigger Spike. So he's going everywhere. He steals out. He he steals the apples and the leaves mm-hmm. from Applejack's farm. He takes Fluttershy's chicken coop, the cakes from Sugar Cube Corner, the Ponyville water tower. Then he pulls a King Kong and swipes Rarity. Uh huh. So then they literally call in the fucking military, and 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 you know they fly at him. And then, but then Spike's just like, no, you, and just flicks them away like it's nothing. And, and he climbs. Say, he, that's when the Wonderbolts show up. And for the longest time, I could sorry, not I should have clarified that. Yeah, yeah. By military, I mean the Wonderbolts. Yeah. But they, but they essentially double as the military. Yeah. And I kept wondering, why are the Wonderbolts in this episode? And then I'm thinking more about it. And I'm like, Oh, right. It's because it's a King Kong reference. It's supposed to be them going around when, like, the planes from the final scene. And, like, the real King Kong, not Peter Jackson's one. Yeah. That's a good yeah. movie. That's a good movie. But, bro, that 1931, I love that crappy animatronic or stop motion King Kong. It's awesome. So he's beaten up everything, goes to a mountain. And then Rarity, who doesn't know that this is Spike, I need to I need to give Rarity some props. Like she was scared, but she wasn't. She like wasn't backing down from the dragon. She was just like, yeah, and it's grasp. But then she was just like, now look here, you piece of crap. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that was, that was cool. And it also plays into back from season one with Dog and Pony Show with her line of just because I'm a lady doesn't mean I can't get myself out of a sticky situation. It's because rarity has that ability to not just be a damsel in distress that she can actually hold her own, even against a giant dragon. It's great. She can't do nothing, but she's not going to like, you know, be screaming and wailing. Mm -hmm. So then, so then he, um, so then he takes the uh, the fire ruby that Rarity had turned into a necklace, and then she contrasts this destructive greed with Spiky Wiky, who she calls, and I quote, the kindest, sweetest, most generous dragon ever. Yeah, you better say that about the person that literally gave you his birthday gift. Mm-hmm. So, so then Spike remembers who he is, or rather who he really is deep inside. Via flashback. Yeah. Um, you know, he play plumb into the earth. And I'm free. Free falling. So, so does that mean Spike's a bad boy and Rarity's a good girl? No, it's honestly reverse. Spike's a good boy. <laughs> so Especially in a crush here, girls. <laughs> so Spike oh my god. So Spike starts to tell Rarity how he feels, but then she places a hoof on his mouth with with a teary smile, which didn't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the two are rescued by Flutters and Rambo, Rambo Dash. And God, now I can else- imagine 
Rainbow Dash playing, uh, uh, taking over for Sylvester Stallone, just being like, I'm Rambo Dash, bitch. Live for nothing or die for something, Fluttershy. <laughs> so everyone's stoked that, like, you know, they're alive. But um, Spike, but Spike's all bummed out. He's like, bro, so what if you can see the darkest side of me? No one can ever change this animal I have become. But Rarity's like, bro. But then Rarity's like, you know what? You did good today. And he's like, what? And I believe it's not the real you. I believe you're not the animal you have become. And she's like, you saved the town. He's like, why? Because you overcame your greed. Mm. And I and I remember watching that, and I'm like, I mean, yeah, she helped, but I'm like, he did, didn't he? Huh, good for him. So then she kisses him again, calls him a hero. And then, and I, and T tropes actually transcribed the note he wrote to Celestia, which was very nice. Thank you. It says, um, <clears throat> dear princess, I can't do a spike voice. Dear princess Celestia, you might think it would feel good to get lots and lots of stuff, but it doesn't feel nearly as good as giving something, so, as giving something special to some pony you care about. Well, I learned it's truly better to give than receive, and that kindness and generosity will lead to true friendship. And what's more, va- and that's more valuable than anything in the world. I feel like that's a skewed a little bit because, yes, you know, it is better morally to give than receive. There's nothing wrong with getting lots of stuff, or rather, being given lots of stuff or obtaining lots of stuff. It's when you become a greedy prick and you gaslight people out of stuff or you just get greedy and you just take what's you just take what's not yours not because you even want it but it's just well no you want it but not because you like it or it's aesthetically pleasing you're just like screw you i'm taking it just because i can and the but, same thing goes but that's with, fine and the same thing goes with that line that everyone always says oh money's the root of all evil no it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. It's the greed of having money and having stuff that's the root of all evil, not just the thing itself. But yeah, that was Secret of My Excess. And wow, this is a great episode. Yeah, I like this episode. Um, I, I like it. I, I, I don't know if I like I don't love it, but I like it a, a, a fair amount. What, what, would, what would you rate it? I would give this a nine this was a fun episode it had a lot of great moments to it a lot of little animation touches that i really liked um and i do like the asop that they gave where it's you know greed especially being manifested here physically with spike growing larger and larger and becoming more destructive with it um definitely felt like i always like it when they do that i always like when they put i always like it when they put visual like representations of like emotions or concepts like and especially in this case like it's really easy to understand it's not like overly complex so Mm -hmm. i i I do like the the symbolism of the of of spike as a big big dragon yeah so yeah nine for me this was this was great See, again, and, and I feel like this is going to sound like that I didn't, like, really like like it. I was going to give it an 8 point, an eight and a quarter, 8.25, just because, like I said, it's really good. It's better than average. Um, but, like I said, I don't, like, love it. There's nothing really wrong with it. Like, I can just put it on, right? I'm like, yeah, that's a good episode. That's a really good episode. But that's kind of that's kind of where it stops a bit. Still good. I mean, it's it, – I, I wouldn't say it's one of, like, the most – famous legacy episodes of season two, but it does have, it does have more of a lasting impact than other episodes in this season. I mean, the season two as a whole for most people is considered the peak beginning to end warts and all. And by warts, I mean, Mary do well, but, but yeah, no, it's, it, it's just, it's just another good episode and a good season. Yeah. That's, that's exactly. how I feel about it. Exactly. So, yeah. Next week, we have Harsmoine Eve, the first Christmas episode. That should be fun. Give us a bit of world building. 
bit of lore. So, until yeah, the, then. that's the that's the episode with uh, winter wrap up. In a way, yeah. No, 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 I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> there is winter, and the and things get wrapped up metaphorically. Shut up. So yeah, we'll see you next time. Yep. So until next time, that's it for me, John. And me, Snakeskin. And we will talk to you guys later. Peace out, Dragon. Adios.